During the First World War, there were a series of executions carried out on British Army and Commonwealth soldiers that today attracts a lot of criticism. There were 306 soldiers who were executed following court-martial for desertion and other military offences during the conflict. Many of these soldiers who were found guilty of desertion were suffering from conditions such as PTSD or shell shock, and often they were not given fair trials and were not given a proper legal defence. In some cases, the defendants on trial and ultimately condemned to death were minors and teenagers, and it's believed today that these young men were too young to be at war and they should not have been there, they should have been at home. The British government used propaganda heavily to get people to enlist, and often boys lied about their ages to get themselves onto the front lines and to see the world, which is what they believed would happen. But the reality was they were stuck for days on end in the hell on earth that was the trenches. Today we look at one of these young men who was shot at dawn and executed, but he was just 17 when he was executed near to weep. Join us today as we look at the horrific execution of Herbert Burden, the boy shot at dawn. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Today the shot at dawn memorial in the National Memorial Arboretum shows the image of a terrified young man tied to a stake, blindfolded just before he was to face a firing squad and his death. This poignant statue is based on Herbert Burden. Born on the 22nd of March 1898 in Lewisham to a gardener, it's believed that he attended school before he then was employed as a delivery driver, possibly on the docks of the River Thames. But as the war broke out in August 1914, Britain had just shy of 250,000 regular soldiers. Around 120,000 of these were based in the British Expeditionary Force, and the rest were stationed abroad all around the world. But it was clear that to face the German army, that more soldiers were needed. With this, recruitment efforts were ramped up, and on the 7th of August 1914, Lord Kitchener, the War Minister, began his infamous campaign of beginning to recruit men between the ages of 19 and 30 to join the army. At first this was successful, and on average 33,000 men were joining the fight. Three weeks later, Kitchener raised the recruiting age to 35, and 500,000 men had volunteered. At the beginning of the war, the army had strict specifications about who could become soldiers. For example, they had a height limitation, but this was later withdrawn. Propaganda would be found all over England, convincing men to join, and eventually Powell's battalions emerged, allowing men to sign up with their friends and to serve with them on the Western Front alongside their mates. The rhetoric in Britain was very much that it was honourable and right to die for your country, and those who refused to go to war were shameful and a disgrace. Conscientious objectors were usually marked with white feathers in the street and were treated terribly by those who remained at home. The main aim of the government was to get soldiers onto the front line, and many politicians gave rousing speeches to try and bolster recruitment. One politician gave an address that stated, Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pull yourselves together and keep your peckers up. I want to assure you that within six weeks to the day, we shall have the Huns on the run, we shall drive them out of France, out of Flanders, out of Belgium, across the Rhine and back into their own territory. There we shall give them a taste of their own medicine. There were a number of boys who were too young to enlist, who eventually lied about their age to go and join the war effort. Officially, the minimum age was 19, but Herbert Burden, the delivery boy from Lewisham, signed up when he was just 16. Service records for him have never really been found, as the regiment's records, the Northumberland Fusiliers, were lost during the Blitz of the Second World War, but it's clear that Burden may have even enlisted before the First World War began. There has been some confusion regarding his records, as he may have also enlisted after the war began, and he claimed he was 19 years old when he attended the recruitment office. But this wasn't true, he was just 16. He was transferred to the British Expeditionary Force, but then soon deserted from the Northumberland Fusiliers, and then returned to London. Following this, he rejoined the war effort and enlisted with the East Surreys. It's not known why he deserted, possibly he may have been found out. But with his second regiment, he was based in the barracks of Dover Castle, before he deserted again in December 1914. It's clear he was probably a young boy who was scared of the reality of conflict. A court of inquiry looked into Herbert Burden's case and absence and declared that Private H. Burden, 3rd East Surrey Regiment, absented himself without leave from his commanding officer at Shaft Barracks, Dover, on the 14th of December 1914, that he is still illegally absent for a period exceeding 21 days, and on the 14th of December 1914, he was deficient, and still is so deficient, of the following articles, 
ammunition, equipment, instruments, regimental necessaries, or clothing of Private H. Burden, 1st East Surrey Regiment. But after a period away from the East Surrey Regiment, Burden then strangely returned to his original regiment. It's not known why he joined the Northumberland Fusiliers originally, then deserted, joined another battalion, and then deserted yet again. But it was with the South Northumberland Fusiliers that he travelled to France. They arrived at the end of March 1915, and Burden was then placed onto the front lines. He fought against the enemy in harsh and probably incredibly scary conditions on the Western Front, alongside his battalion. They fought valiantly in the Battle of Hoog, where both sides suffered heavy casualties, but it's not known whether Burden took part in this long offensive, near to weep. It was indicated that he had seen not too much action at his court-martial, that the majority of action he saw during the First World War was the usual trench sniping, being a lookout and then trying to shoot the enemy in the trench opposite, and also that he had been present on some patrols. However, it is clear that the trenches were not a place for a young boy, and it's likely Burden was scared, out of his depth, and in a war where he had no place. But whilst in the trenches he breached the army's disciplinary code a number of times, and did desert on a number of occasions. He did win a medal, but this was then taken away from him when he was convicted of desertion. But it's clear in May 1915 he was present on the Ypres salient, and was involved on the assault on the Belward Ridge. During the Second Battle of Ypres, in which the fighting was intense, Burden fought, and during this specific battle, the Germans launched the largest gas attack seen during the First World War. The conditions in the trenches were truly terrifying, and many soldiers were broken by the constant shelling barrages, and the fear that every day could be their last, with a German bullet having their name on. It was a terrifying situation, and living in the trenches was dirty, unsanitary, and a long way home for Herbert Burden. He was suffering from the usual nerve-shattering baptism of shelling in the trenches, and was probably suffering from shell shock as well as the trauma of having seen a number of his friends shot and killed in battle. With this, he was sent to a military hospital for treatment, but was then discharged on the 26th of June 1915. He was then attached to a battalion, where they were sent towards the front line to dig trenches. This was terrifying for Burden, who was suffering from shell shock, and was transported straight back to the front line. Following having this order, Herbert Burden then left his post. He was seen with the Royal West Kent Regiment the following day, leaving his duties. He said later that he went there to comfort a friend who he had served with. He said he had heard he had lost a brother and wanted to see if this was true and comfort him. This may have actually been true as the West Kent Regiment did recruit soldiers from around Burden's home area of Lewisham, but on the 28th of June 1915 he was arrested for desertion. Things moved very quickly for Herbert Burden. In the two days following his capture, he'd been court-martialed and then found guilty of desertion. His appearance was described following his trial, and it was said, Burden had an expanded chest measurement of 36 inches. His complexion was given as fresh with dark brown hair and hazel eyes. The doctor described his physical development as good. He also appears to have two tattoos, one on his right upper arm and another on his left forearm, of clasped hands, love Lily respectively. But following his trial, the death sentence for Herbert Burden was confirmed by the commander of the British Second Army, General Sir Herbert Plumer. Plumer had no respect for deserters or their possible links to conditions such as shell shock, and he sentenced Burden to death to be shot at dawn for desertion, facing a military firing squad. But what is strange is that Herbert Burden did not raise the fact he was actually a minor and should not have been fighting at any point during the war. This would have certainly earned him a reprieve, and he would have been repatriated back to Britain following this revelation. But because of this, his death sentence went ahead on the 21st of July 1915. It was said that the standards of the pre-war regular army, with regards to discipline, were applied to every officer who joined, and with this burden was shot by the firing squad. The statue that shows him communicates how he would have stood at the execution post. Near to weep, burden would have been led out of his jail cell by a number of military officers, and a priest, before he was then tied to a stake at a firing range or in a clearing. Opposite him would have been a firing squad, comprising of possibly six British soldiers. Sometimes they gathered men from the deserters' regiment. They would have been stood with their rifles until the signal to ready was given. A disc was pinned over Burden's heart, showing the firing squad where to aim, and as his hands were tied behind his back, he was a frozen target. Following this, the orders of fire was given, and Herbert Burden was killed, as a deserter at the age of just 17. He was the youngest person executed by the British Army ever, 
and it was later reported back home he was killed in action. The story of Herbert Burden and his execution is a very sad one. Over 300 others were executed for various offences, such as desertion or cowardice by the British Army during the First World War, and there was little regard for the PTSD or shell shock which drove many men to desert. What in particular is tragic about Burden's case is his age, as he should have been nowhere near the campaign during the First World War, and as he lied about his age to go and fight, he was treated like a normal soldier. The question of his age was never raised, and this may have saved him. Along with Herbert Burden's statue commemorating those shot at dawn for desertion or military offences, are over 300 posts symbolising the executions of others during the First World War, and each case is tragic in its own right. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.